I'd say that it's an, an it's a it's a love story that um, is made impossible by the intersection of race and class. Helen, what would you say? I'd say that's an absolutely brilliant summation. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then I'd also add that it's, 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 it's art imitating life. Okay, so I personally think that it's so important. So as I said earlier, I didn't know the backstory. So bring it to 2020, present day, where we're dealing with a uh, reckoning of racial divide, racism. We have the, black, the backdrop of Black Lives Matter. I think that what makes the story important in present day is that for some people who perhaps have not experienced racism, yeah. allowing them to see in an alternate world what that experience would be like almost personalizes it without bringing it into the real life, so to speak. So how important is it in present day to you two to be involved in a project that is really going to be that powerful? Oh my goodness, like it, I think it hits you in waves, right? Because it's so much to take in at that level where you realize, because we, we say it when we're, when we're coming up as actors and we say stuff like, oh, I wanna tell good stories. I wanna tell important stories. I wanna tell stories that change the world. I want, well, I wanted to, those are the stories I've always wanted to tell. And coming from a country like South Africa, where we're just like, I feel like we're only beginning to deal with some of this stuff and we're only beginning to even put like a, a language to it. Um, telling these stories for me has always just been like, well, from here, it's always felt like just a drop in the ocean. But, but on this scale, it really feels like something got dented, you know. Um, and I'm so grateful to have been part of, uh, uh, just have been played a role in telling the story. And, and, and the people that we told it with and in the way that it was handled and treated. And right after... The, the airing of the show in South Africa and that the whole George, George Floyd and Black Lives Matter um, scenario, it was just like, I couldn't believe we had just told this story. <laughs> right. We had just told the story. We were like, oh my goodness, this is what we were trying to say. And it, it, it felt like the world had set a stage for this, for Noughts and Crosses. I feel the same way. So <laughs> Helen, when I watched that first episode, and uh, I don't want to give away too much because I want our viewers to get the same experience, but the interaction between the black police officer and the young white man was so powerful. But in my mind, I was like, oh, this black police officer is going to be in big trouble. The story plays out completely different. So Helen, your experience, what I'm saying, do you feel like that's something that for you specifically, um, being a white woman, did it resonate with you? Did this story open your eyes to what, not that they weren't open, but did they open your eyes to like, hey, you know what, we're actually teaching in this, this show, in this series, we're teaching without really directly teaching. Was that your experience, Helen? Well, well, I mean, even before I did the show, I was aware of the books because my kids have read them avidly, all of them. And they are, I don't know if they are in the US, but they're massive books here. They're actually on the curriculum in schools. Oh, wow. And, um, and so, and they're really important to teenage kids. And I think it's that kind of book being within them from childhood that has made this generation so much more tolerant, understanding. And I mean, I, I just think our kids are, I, I, and it's thanks to people like Mallory Blackman having written that kind of thing and it becoming part of the culture. And that, so I, I was aware of those books. And when I, when I got, when I was offered the part, my, my children just said, oh my God, mom, you have to take this. This is it's Maggie. And it's, it's not in crosses. It's just the most brilliant, important book. And so, I mean, I was aware of just how, um, just how important to a whole generation of people this is. And as you say, what it does, I think, for white people is just, 
it's just the everyday racism points that that make you open your eyes and kind of shock you it's the I, I said in the previous bit but but it's the it's the plaster being put on my white son's hand which is a dark plaster because that's the ubiquitous plaster mm -hmm. um, which is the alternate to to the reality of it which is the uh, light skin plaster you know yeah. just those tiny moments of um like oh the world is set up this way for hundreds of years of uh, the way it's been uh that is why the world works like this and just and just tipping it on its head it makes you see things in you i think absolutely Hopefully. absolutely Hopefully. so bonnie you play jasmine and you're Sefi's mom and you got a lot going on yeah besides being a mom <laughs> um so without giving away too much tell us a little bit about jasmine and her her story i mean like jasmine is doing the most like i right i'm just like at the beginning like what more could we add to jasmine's plate <laughs> that could like really just describe like how um just wretched she is really i mean she's just we meet her she's kissing another man in the house she's putting she's asking maggie's to cover for her she's been drinking it's just you know it's it's happening to her um but what i really love about about maggie's i mean sorry jasmine's story arc is that when you meet her you you have every reason to hate her and then as you meet everybody else in her world and get to understand her husband and the dynamics of her world, you start to realize, oh, shucks, this, um, she's, uh, she's, it's a lot. It's a lot that this woman is dealing with. And then we start, start to slowly, she slowly siphons that compassion out of you. And that like, where you start, you start to, to say, okay, cool. I think, I think I see how you, you could get here. I think I, I see how you could arrive here. I'm glad you say that. So I am, um almost done the series and I, I have no compassion yet for her character so i'm glad i'm glad you said that i have something to look forward to now helen you play maggie Caleb's mom you also work with jasmine your loyalty to this family uh is incredible uh the secrets that you keep are amazing tell our viewers a little bit about your character and specifically how it relates to Jasmine. Um, given the backstory, so that first episode where Jasmine is basically saying like, does your husband talk about your career? And you're, you're like, this is not my career. Given, you know, the backstory of how we all got here. Um, yeah, I think, well, Maggie is, um, a woman who has obviously grown up with this racist uh, situation as her, you know, seeping through her veins. And um, uh, her husband is, has tried to fight it, but she has kind of accepted it and, and wants to just ha make the best possible that she can of her life and of her family's life with what she sees as an intractable problem. And, um, and so she's got a job and it's with this family, uh, this very well-to-do family, um, a political family, and she's looked after their children and she's part of the family and she tries to see the best of them, I think. And, and like, I mean, I, I, like, like lots of people who, who work for families in a lower capacity than an equal capacity, if you see what I mean. I think, I think there's ever so slightly, we call it um, doffing your cap. Um, you know, you, you, you kind of have a respect for these people. I think there's a certain amount of that. And that obviously, that's peeled away as, um, as the, the barbarity of the society becomes more and more apparent to her. But... Um, you know, she also, she, she loves the family. She loves the people within that family as well. She loves um, Sefi and, and Jasmine and um, because she's just been with them. And in the end, she sees that they're people 
like her. It's just the whole of the society is set up in such a, just a terrible, in, iniquitous way. That, um, and she doesn't think she can fight against it as a single person. You know, I think that's her attitude to the struggle. Her husband, her husband believes or has believed in a, in a, in a physical struggle against it. Whereas she, she just doesn't think it's at her place and she's trying to work within that system, incrementally changing tiny things. I mean, it's that, that, that's quite interesting as well. The, the way that you fight against it, I think, um, um, there's, a, there's, there's, there's stuff about that within our family. I want to say that this show, I'm so excited for its U.S. release. I think that the timing is impeccable. I think that it's really going to be a teaching moment without re people realizing that it's a teaching moment because they're being entertained, not only by the wonderful acting, but by the costumes, the lighting, like all of it makes it an experience. And for me, I knew that it was a series, but I really did feel like, I was at a blockbuster movie. Like it gave me yeah. that experience, even in my house during quarantine. So uh, I just have one last question. Um, what do you want people to take away from this story? Bonnie, I'll, I'll go to you. I, I today, because I, it changes all the time for me with what I want them to take away, right? I'm, I'm now at that point where I want the people who say, it's not that bad and come on, you can get over it. And oh, do you always have to hop on about this? I want those people to finally just be silent and listen. I love that. On that note, thank you ladies so much for your time. I think that says it all. It says it all. I think that we are probably gonna have different discussions after people see this series. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, thank Melissa. You.